Hi folks, it's Sandy Hovetter of Data Designs Publishing and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to turn text into tables in Microsoft Word. After we've done a quick uh, example to show you how quickly that can happen, I will show you the most common error, the most common problem that people run into when they do this. With that, let's get started. What you're seeing is my screen. I have two documents up in Microsoft Word. On the left, I have uh, data that is sort of formatted as a table, but it's really just text. It's not in what uh, Word would call a table. And we have a blank document on the right in which we're going to create that table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to take all of this and uh, select it. And I can right click and uh, select copy. You could have also done a control C. I'm just going to come over here and hit a control V to paste that data. Now that looks a bit different. Let me explain that to you. On In the left uh, file, I am not showing hidden characters. In the right file, I am. Those arrows pointing to the right indicate that, that there are tabs there. The way you can toggle that on and off is in the home ribbon over in the paragraph area. There's a little symbol, looks like a paragraph symbol. When I click that, it toggles the, uh, the hidden characters on or off. They are now off. I can toggle them and they're on. And I'll put them off. It doesn't really matter for creating a table which way uh, they are. I'm now going to select all of that. There are a couple of different ways that I can create a table from here. The most common way would be to go to the Insert menu. You can see Tables here. I can click on that and convert text to tables. But before I do that, let me just point out that because that's something I would want to do often, I have it in my custom ribbon up here. We will do another video tuto tutorial about how to customize your uh, top ribbon. Again, I can click on it, and I get the same menu as when I went to the Insert menu, and uh, or I get the same dialog box as when I went to the Insert menu and clicked on Table. So I'm now going to click on Convert Text to Table. It tells brings up a dialog box. Let me move it over here, telling me that I have four columns. That's a good indication that uh, the table is going to turn out right because it does have four columns. I want to point out this middle, or this, I'm sorry, this bottom area. If paragraphs is clicked, notice that the number of columns changes to one. What that's telling the computer is I want you to uh, separate the text at paragraph returns. And so, of course, it only gives me one column because there's only one paragraph return per line. But I've, I've separated my data by tabs, as we saw when we uh, displayed the hidden characters. So when I change that to tabs, it goes to four columns. The other ways you can separate text is with a comma or any character you might have used. But typically you're going to use tabs. So we're going to say OK. And let me deselect so you can see I now have a table. It's not quite what we would want it to be. I'm going to start here on the right and pull that in a bit. I'm going to take this left, this first column, hold down the shift key so that it lets me pull it out as far as I need to. I'm going to manually adjust these to what I want them to be. And there we go. Not a bad looking table, but certainly not anything uh, that I'd be very excited about. One thing that I don't like is that there's a lot of space below. And I'm going to adjust that very easily. I selected the whole table by clicking on the little square in the top left. I'm going to go to the Home menu, and I'm going to open the Paragraph dialog box. And I know that that extra space below there is because I have line spacing at 1.5. I take that to single line spacing. That extra space could also have been caused because of space before or after, but in this case it was caused by the line spacing. When I say OK, and you can see my table looks a little better. But I want to jazz it up, and it's really easy to do. With your cursor, your text cursor, in the table anywhere, you can see that up here, uh, a whole new menu option called Table Tools is, uh, is available. When you click on that, it opens the Table Tools ribbon. And here in the middle of the ribbon, 
our table, <clears throat> excuse me, here in the middle of the ribbon are table styles. And there are many, many pre-formatted styles. Let me just open the whole uh, list of styles. If you click on the very bottom arrow there, it opens all of them. You can see the various looks, but that hides the table. So I'm going to click outside that. And if you just click on the middle arrow, it will uh, move the options up one row at a time. And so you can see that we're kind of uh, scrolling through the options. Now when I uh, mouse over any of these options, it changes the look of my table. You can see the table changing as I'm mousing over. Let's do something like this. I kind of like that. It's different color rows. It's not broken out by a uh, it doesn't have the horizontal lines. I'm sorry, it doesn't have the vertical lines, borders. Let me see what else might be available. That's a little bit different. Notice there's the same style in uh, many different colors. There you go. There's a style that I like. Here, I'll put it in blue. I've got a pretty good looking table. It's not perfect. I would select the top row, go back to the home menu and make that text centered. Uh, I would take these middle cells and again in the paragraph menu here I would right align them. Let's see what happens when I right align this data. It's a little close to the margin. In order to fix that I need to go into cell properties so I'm going to go to Table Properties, and then uh, actually I, I go into Table Properties, go to Option, and I'm going to fix the, uh, the right inset or cell margin to 0.2. Say OK. And that moved that text over a bit. There we go. Not a bad looking table, and I created it, I went about two minutes, I think. Oh, there's something wrong with that table, isn't there? Need to break that a little bit wider and make that a little bit wider. There you go. Now I want to show you the most common problem that people have. I'm going to come over here to my left file and I'm going to delete some carriage returns that I have in there. Now you have two copies of the table. The bottom copy is exactly the same in terms of content as the top copy, but I didn't take the time to set tabs in the bottom copy. the uh, Let me show you the hidden characters. And I went to the home menu and I toggled that uh, hidden character uh, command. Inexperienced users will often use the standard uh, or default settings for tabs and force fit their table. And that's what I did in this second table. I forced this quantity column to all start at the same place simply by adding more tabs in. You can see in the first row where it says category, I have two tabs to make the, the, the column heading quantity line up with the numbers in the other rows. In the total row, I had to use three tabs. If I turn these uh, hidden characters off, you can see that the rows aren't as evenly spaced as they are in the top column. In the top, I'm sorry, in the top data, in the top data, I went in and I set my tabs. You can see that this tab is a right aligned tab. And this tab that lines up the income column is a right aligned tab. And this third one is a decimal tab. Down here, we've just gone with the, we just have the default tabs where we've got a, a left aligned tab every half inch. So let's see what happens when I create a table from this data at the bottom. Again, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to use the control C command. I'm going to bring it over here to the right hand document so you can see the difference. I added a few returns in so that the two tables will be parallel. Uh, select it, come to insert, table, convert text to table. Ooh, here's a hint that something's wrong. It's saying that the number of columns is seven. That makes me say something's wrong, but I look and it's separated as tabs. 
All right. Well, I can see that because I have the hidden character showing. But if I didn't have those hidden characters showing, which most uh, um, new users of Word do not show hidden characters, uh, many experienced users of Word don't use hidden character show hid hidden characters because they can be very distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK and see what I get. What I get is a, is a little bit of a disaster. Let me move this right column in so that we can zoom in on this table. This might be a little easier to see if I format the table a little bit. Let's uh, go to our table tools and I want to pick a style that uh, will is colorful. Oops, multiple row. There you go. That'll be good. It has rows and column borders, but it's colorful so you can easily see the each cell. I'm also going to turn off the hidden characters so that you can't see them. And so now you can see that I've got a table with a lot of blank cells. Right here there's a blank cell between the word category and the word quantity, and yet there's data in that column for the first two rows here. Let me uh, just make that column a little wider to make things easier to see. I was holding down the shift key to make that column wider as I dragged it. So drag the, uh, the the border of the column. And uh, let me make it wider still so it's all in one line. You can see now that there are blank cells. The reason for that are the extra tabs. Again, I'm going to just pull this over next to the data so you can see the data that it came from. All of these extra tabs looking at the left, oops, looking at the left document, make that smaller, looking at the left document, all these extra tabs here in the first row, we have two tabs between category and quantity. That's why on the right file where we show the document, where we show the table we created, I have a blank cell there because Microsoft reads every tab as instructions to create a new column. So it says, okay, this is the end of the first column data. I'm on the left document here. This is the end of the first, the data in the first column. Go to the second column. Whoops, there's no data there. There's another tab. Go to the next column. In the next column, we're going to put the word quantity. Well, that's exactly what, I'm in the right document now, that's exactly what happened in that first row, those top uh, first three cells. In the second row, where it says print hard cover, uh, there's only one tab. And so the quantity of 240 appears in the second column. So if I want to clean that up, if I want to fix that, the way to fix that is that when you're creating the tables in Word, I'm in the working in the left document now, that you should only have one tab between every uh, column of data. Now, if you look at this, let's hide. Let me see. I think I yep. I only have one column, one tab everywhere. If I hide this, you can see that that data doesn't line up at all. And you'd think that it would just be a mess when I create the table. But I'm going to show you that it's not. I'm going to, I selected the text. I did a Control C. Come over here. I'm going to show my characters so that I can do that. A Control V to copy it. Move the table up a bit. Select it. Right, oh, right click doesn't get us there. Insert table. Convert text to table. Say OK. And uh, again, just fix the lines a bit. And you can see that I have a table that um, very much looks there we go it looks a lot like uh, our final product and I didn't have I don't have all of those extra uh, cells with no information in it so even though it didn't line up even though the data didn't line up in our in our file when the the table data was as text because there's only one tab between each column of information and it lines up perfectly when we convert the table or I'm sorry convert the text to a table that's it tables are very easy to make in Microsoft Word and because of the established styles you can quickly format them 
once you've formatted them, you have the flexibility to make any changes to that style. It's not rigid and it doesn't keep you there. Uh, it doesn't require that you keep the look of that style, but it's a great starting place. The thing you want to watch out for is making sure that you only have one tab between every column of data. Even if it doesn't line up before you put it into a table, it will line up when you uh, convert the text to a table. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sandy Hovetter of Data Designs Publishing. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call, 419-660-0500. Have a great day.